Hello Detroit, welcome to my pre-recorded talk about how I ported Python to WebAssembly. It's an honor to present this topic to you today. And thank you very much, Liam, for inviting me and giving me the chance to talk about Python and WebAssembly. Hi, I'm Christian Heimes. I'm a Python core developer and principal software engineer for Red Hat. In the past, I usually worked on security-related topics for Python, but a year ago, WebAssembly piqued my interest and I started to dig into WebAssembly. A year ago also, Python 3.10 did not have any support for WebAssembly platforms in upstream at all. But this year, with the upcoming release of Python 3.11, we have official support for the WebAssembly platforms AMP script and WASI, and even have most of our tests running on these platforms, except for some features that just not support it. This talk is divided in three chapters. In the first chapter, I'm going to talk about and scripting support, followed by how WebAssembly system interface support was implemented, and finally, some words how I think the future for Python and WebAssembly will look like, and some of the problems we are still facing with and scripting WASI. A big shout out to lots of people who helped contributing to this effort to get Python working on WebAssembly. It wouldn't have been possible with several core developers helping out, um, with people from the Enscripting community, with the PyODI team, and people from the Bytecode Alliance who helped with WASI and wasn't uh, time problems. So, first part Enscripting. If you're not familiar with Mscripten, it's a toolchain and SDK to compile C and C++ code for to WebAssembly, targeting browsers or Node.js. There's usually some kind of JavaScript GUI layer implemented that provides a syscall layer, a visual file system, and other features. The basic implementation of Python um, just that works with Mscript. So we have a very major and portable code base. We use C11 without many fancy features because we target a wide variety of compilers. We use autoconf and make files, and it'd be an even an extensive test suite. But some of the limitations made it a bit more harder and also some problems uh, in our build system. For example, we require p threads, which are mostly not available, not in WASI at all, and in Mscript and only under some circumstances. Our cross-compiling system was broken at the point I started looking into that, and the way how we bootstrap Python, so Python needs Python to compile Python, makes it a bit tricky to get Python working. But with some efforts and also help from um, Ethan Smith, uh, last year, November 2021, we got the main branch of Python compiled to WebAssembly and running that in the default HTML interface of Mscript in the browser. This required lots of hackery and tooling and scripts and shellcode we were to just get it bootstrapped. While even had that already working, I was still facing with some problems with my uh, initiative. Um, you see here a screenshot um, of a web console that shows that uh, there's a vital Python error. So because it can't import the encodings package or model, this is the first Python code that gets imported by Python. So that was very exciting for me. The first time I got Python working in the browser, at least to a point where it needed the standard library. But Ethan had already figured out how to bundle the standard library and package it as a visual file system and contribute that, uh, distribute it to the browser. So the build system of Python, um, we use, as I mentioned before, autoconf and configure, which detects uh, things like the compiler, uh, available header files, available functions, and other properties of the system. When we have these things detected, we compile a very minimal core to bootstrap the import system. So import lib is Python's import system that powers the import statement, but it's written in Python and we don't have anything to import the import system. So we compile the Python code to bytecode uh, 
inject the bytecode into a header file and then just load the bytecode uh, of all that to C code. Um, the next step, when we have the import system working, we can create a bootstrap interpreter that can do a bit more, can actually run Python code. And so we use that to deep freeze the standard library. There's a new feature introduced in 3.11 by the Faster Python team, uh, which makes it faster to start Python by having common packages and common models also frozen in the C code. Once we have that done, we can compile the actual Python interpreter with the static built-in models, and then use the Python interpreter to compile the shared extension models. For having WebAssembly support and having cross-compiling working again, uh, I had to change several aspects. So what we had to do, for example, was introduce a new WebAssembly cross-compiling target. So we had like Webm32, Mscripten, and WASI. And um, for mscript, I also introduced the idea of different like targets or flavors because for one, we wanted to target browsers, but for running the test, we also wanted to have raw file system access from Node. So there are like different ways and targets to <clears throat> compile Python. Um, also, there is an option to specify and uh, use a build Python interpreter. So in order to cross compile, we first have to compile a Python operator for the kernel platform and then use that to bootstrap the freezing of the import lib and the deep frozen files. Also, running setup and detecting features is kind of awkward and doesn't work properly. So um, we replaced the setup pi with additional checks in configure and had the building of shared extension models also move to the make file. Uh, this is not completely done in 3.11, but will be done for 3.12 because we also want to get rid of setup pi and this utils in the core. There are also improvements for config cache to just speed up development and some fixes for vpath and other tree builds. So we can use the same checkout to build both the build Python interpreter and the final web assembly builds. While we were working on that, we were also collaborating with the Pyodite team. The Pyodite is an existing, working, stable distribution of Python for the web browser. Um, they had everything figured out, but they also had to run, contribute and keep lots of patches. They have like a dozen downstream patches to work around the same problems we we're having. And slowly we are migrated and upstream several of these patches into CPython or replace them by better efforts. Like instead of having a the hackish PyConfig H patches, we used a autocon feature called config site. Next thing, when we had everything like working more or less, we wanted to make sure that all the tests were passing and for that, I used Node with the raw file system access because I couldn't figure out how to run the test in the browser. And with Node, it was more akin to things I do normally running things on the command line. So for each of the failing tests or crashing tests, and there were lots of failing crashing tests, I had to check, is this caused by missing or unsupported API? There's some wrong assumption in the test. Maybe the bug in Python, maybe it's a bug in Mscript, or there were even some known bugs in muzzle libc. Some of the unsupported or unavailable features are like starting a new process because browsers are not there to sandbox that you can't just run a new process from a browser that would be insecure. Uh, so um, for all tests, they're using fork, exec, or other features related to processes, um, added markers and decorators to skip these tests. We also used sub-processes uh, for our internal test system. So regression test in Python, uh, we're using sub process for isolation and for running tests in parallel. For that, Ethan implement a host runner so we can use the build Python interpreter to drive the test system that would then spawn new Node.js processes for every test case. Uh, pthreads are not supported unless you use, use pthreads, um, so we need to at like the regulars and skip test, sockets, signals, and other APIs just 
weren't available because they're not implemented in the browser for good reasons. There are also some invalid assumptions that no longer hold true for mscript, like uh, tests assume if they're running with effective user ID zero, so root, the test will also have Capsus admin to uh, have additional like privileges and do things that normal user can't do in the system. Or that we can read um, arg value zero, so uh, read the WebAssembly file itself, it's not accessible. Having UTF-8, non-UTF-8 files or inaccessible files is also not supported by mscripten or calling uh, fstat on pipe file descriptors. Some of the interesting bugs or the most annoying bug, I ran into you with this runtime error from Node uh, complaining about a function signature mismatch while the interpreter was shut down, so on PyFinalizeX. This happened because one of the test models uh, had like a invalid function signature. So it didn't uh, accept uh, one of the arguments. So by default, if you free a model, you get a reference to the model, uh, so you can do any additional things on the uh, on the model while freeing the model. But the zone info uh, implementation just uh, accepted no argument, so just void. This is normally not a problem for uh, ABIs uh, like Linux or um, Windows, because missing arguments or additional arguments just just passed on registers uh, or on the stack and just ignored. Uh, by the function. But WebAssembly has a much more stricter call. So the call indirect uh, call in WebAssembly has strict checks and with the function um, signature mismatches, it fails and crashes. I also ran in, uh, interesting bugs in mscript then, and also the way how to fix or address this bugs was a very interesting approach because I had to rewrite uh, tests or implement the reproducer in C code and the fixes usually involve um, modifying a JavaScript layer that looks a bit like syscall interceptor uh, in kernel code. Yeah, interesting. Um, so here's a list of bugs. I'm not going through all the bugs I found. I'll put the slides up. You can follow any of the bugs if you're interested yourself. Also contributed several improvements to mscript and like having um, a SQLite port uh, in mscript build environment, uh, several fixes for version uh, 64. And since beginning of this month, so September, um, we have all Python tests passing on version 64 too. And several other fixes. Um, and by April, 2022, we finally got all tests passing. Uh, you see here, uh, we're still skipping like 92 tests. These are mostly network related tests because networking doesn't work like in normal environments here because browsers are also um, uh, tightly secured and sandboxed. So you can't open raw TCP sockets. And this is unmodified C Python 3.11 source codes. So very cool. At this point, um, Brad and I, we're considering uh, to uh, move an, a WebAssembly M script into tier three. There's a new concept we also introduced um, in this year, a different level of support uh, for environments like CPU architectures and operating systems. It's a bit more like the Rust uh, concept of tier one, two, three for target platforms. For that, we need to uh, have stable build bot, that's our CI system. Uh, Microsoft and Ralph, thank you for that, contributed uh, a virtual machine where I installed build bot and the SDKs. Um, the steering council also wanted to have end user documentation just to explain to end users which features are missing on Amscripten. Uh, I implemented core developer documentation to um, give core developers more details how the platform works and how they compile can compile and debug problems. I uh, also implemented uh, things like uh, container images with the SDKs and a, another host uh, hosted by Microsoft with pre-installed SDKs just to test things. 
Uh, finally, uh, a new automation script, which made it very, very simple to compile Python. So if you run this script in main or in 3.11.1, it's not going to be in 3.11.0. We'll first tell you how to install the SDKs and give you some tips and point you the right documentation. And then if everything installed, it will configure and compile a build Python, configure and compile Python for the browser, run a local web server, and then open the right files in your browser and just give you a prompt. And this is also implemented for other targets like um, mscript with Node or WASI. And the last thing I currently ran like on my own is like unofficial builds and also smoke tests for uh, mscript and SDK, uh, latest version, uh, tip of tree upstream, and for WASI with different versions of the web in time. So speaking of WASI or WebAssembly system interface, after I had mscript working, Brett poked me to look into um, WebAssembly system interface, WASI. It turns to be that most of my work for mscript and all the procured uh, Python code, there are still several other things that were missing, um, like um, lots of features from the socket API when implemented. There's no pthread and no pthread stubs. Well, mscript provides stubs for pthread APIs. No user API, no dub syscall, and some other restrictions. Thankfully, uh, Signal Store Labs has uh, written an additional layer or library called Wasix, which provides stubs for most of these APIs. And like uh, with Amscripten, I uh, also ran into problems and bugs with the SDK and wasn't time during my development. Um, you can some links if you like to follow them up. Um, yeah. After I started to understand how Wazi works and um, how uh, Wazix works, uh, I came to the conclusion that Wazix helped us a lot to bootstrap and um, start the Wazi support, uh, but Wasix had some downside. Um, all the missing functions were uh, replaced by stubs that returned an error. While Python developer usually check if a function exists and then do something. So having functions that error that are present but error out are um, not very user friendly. So I wrote my own uh, threading stubs and replaced all of the missing functions with additional autoconf checks and if that's so the uh, the um, BSD socket APIs, the uh, socket uh, net DT, uh, database APIs like host lookups, wait pit, dub, and missing constants. So dub was especially tricky because we required dub in one place in the Python parser for error reporting, but I was able to replace that with uh, another function called fopencookie because we only dub because we convert a file descriptor to a, a file handle. And when we close the file handle, we don't want to close the file descriptor. So from future import WASM, so what holds the future of Python on WebAssembly? So there are different things that are going on. Um, the first person who actually adopted my CPython upstream work uh, was Trey, and um, he's running a um, a paste bin where you can just copy and paste Python code, and then have the code run on your system. Rather cool. And this is also something that we want to include in the future in the C Python documentation, so we have executable documentation examples in the in the Python world. But what else? So how Currently, the system is structured and how I envision they will work in the future is on the very low level, we will have basic support for WASI and mscript in CPython. But since we lack a good understanding and um, also the resources in the core developer team, lots of additional work will be provided by Pyodite. Pyodite will like have the installer, will have uh, packages provided, we'll have a glue layer to the JavaScript API. I'll talk about that. 
There will be efforts like running Jupyter Notebooks, like PyScript, PyGain, NumPy, other things. Well, for Wasi, we are not sure yet because we are very new and uh, there is no like production for Python in Wasi. Because there's a lot of things to do. So, for example, we have not figured out how to do proper deployment and distribution of Python on Wasi. I've been playing around with Wiser and Wasi F uh, VFS to create like single file distributions. Uh, socket support does not work yet correctly. I'm also facing some issues with Wasm time. I have not had the time to test other Wasm runtimes except Wasm time. And we're also missing uh, popular Python extensions that rely on third party libraries. One other thing that I hope that WebAssembly may help us in the future to get out of the Python binary extension hell. So if you have Python extensions with binary code, like C code, Fortran code, C++ code, whatever, they have to be compiled for a specific combination of CPU, platform, and Python version. But maybe in the future, we could actually just compile it to WebAssembly, have a WebAssembly runtime embedded in Python as an extension, and then only have one file to distribute. There are things from mscript and in browsers that may help us to run Python on these platforms. For example, mscript doesn't have a stable ABI. Uh, for PyoDiet, if they distribute Python and extensions, they have to make sure that every extension is compiled with the same version, otherwise it will just crash or fail. Debugging is also tricky, especially for core developers who like C hackers and they use like GDB or other low level debuggers. That does not work um, good at the moment. C, C++, DevTools and Chrome, um, they don't give the same experience and uh, the same readable information. Compile time checks for this involved function pointer task or Function mismatch uh, would also help us a lot. Um, there's some effort uh, currently in Chrome to improve at least error reporting here. Um, Wasi SAK, the same problem. There is an option to uh, run um, Wasm time uh, to provide dwarf debug symbol. The feature is currently also broken. Dynamic limping, uh, I'm sorry, dynamic linking would help us a lot to. Um, distribute and add more Python extensions. Um, some tooling like mBuilder, so the mscript import system to create um, distributions for um, extensions like Zlib vzip2 will help us too. And maybe having uh, stops for pthread and other missing features uh, in Wasi SDK may be helpful. But not just that. So we don't, we also want to help the um, the community. I think one thing that where Python could help you really well is use Python as smoke tests because Python is very, very good to follow compiler bugs, even kernel crashes and kernel bugs. Uh, most recently, we found a bug in Equimo on PPC 64. Um, that could help you. But in general, I think uh, that Python on WebAssembly. Um, will provide lots of opportunities, uh, but there's still lots of work to do. But I think that, yeah, Python Labs loves WebAssembly. Thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you in the chat. I hope they will be able to attend the um, talk remotely and answer your questions in the chat.